jealous teenager discovers her father has secretly brought a French refugee home and devises a plan to make her leave. In 1942, during Salazar's dictatorship in Portugal, a police officer named Yasmim notifies Chief Inspector Vargas about two French individuals apprehended for lacking visas in their passports. Upon seeing Laura in the holding room, the superior, captivated by her beauty, instructs his subordinate to have the woman frisked by their female colleague. Later, Yasmim checks on Laura's brother, Boris, who explains that he is a refugee from France. Unable to understand the language, the inspector requests him to empty his pockets. The man complies and reveals several items, including a pack of cigs. The detective tries one and jokes with the detainee about smoking tobacco meant for girls. Boris laughs, prompting the cop to warn him that he'll soon be in tears. Meanwhile, Vargas searches Laura's bag, discovering lipstick, compact powder, and a lighter. Intrigued, he opens the cosmetic product and applies its bright red color to his skin. Later, Madalena conducts a body search on the woman as instructed by Yasmin but finds nothing. The chief inspector then steps in, asking his colleague to stop the frisking. In the other room, Boris explains the items in his pocket, lying that he carries insulin because of diabetes. Despite this, the cop confiscates his belongings, suspecting that he's an illegal substance user. Vargas then brings Laura into his office for further investigation. The woman implies that she's not an enemy because she doesn't possess any explosives. She also admits that their passports were fake and purchased in Casablanca. Upon learning this, the inspector reminds her that it's an offense and they could be deported back to France. When Vargas suspects they're spies, the woman clarifies that she and her brother are refugees and the names on the passport are real. However, the inspector doubts her statement, asserting that he'll have them further investigated. Upon hearing this, Laura allures him in exchange for safety, offering her money and body. Following this, Madalena takes the woman to the holding area where Boris is. On the way, the refugee notices her missing lipstick, unaware that Vargas took it. Later, Yasmin reports to his superior, disclosing that Boris has morphine. When the cop inquires about their next steps with the refugees, Vargas assures him that he'll take care of everything. Living in a hotel, the chief inspector's daughter, Ilda, reads a newspaper article to her ill and unresponsive mother, Marta. The article recounts a refugee's harrowing experience in a prisoner camp. After finishing the reading, the teenager lies beside the older woman and wonders why her father keeps similar articles in his study room, suspecting he's keeping a secret. Suddenly, Ilda hears the French anthem playing in the background as her dad arrives. Before greeting him, she quickly heads down to the study room to return the newspaper to the cabinet. Inside, she discovers a photo of another woman, feeling confused about why her father has it. Quickly, she returns it and locks the cabinet upon hearing footsteps approaching. Afterward, Ilda goes to the kitchen where she encounters their family Lee's housekeeper, Diolinda, who is busy preparing their meal. The teenager asks where Vargas is, but the maid is clueless. When the teenager declares that she'll look for her dad in the annex, the woman prohibits her from doing so because it's forbidden. Despite the warning, Ilda disregards Diolinda's advice and urges her to clean Marta who soiled herself. Ilda then goes outside and encounters Vargas, who forbids her from going to the room. She then accompanies her dad inside the house, informing him that Marta recognized and looked at her earlier. When the chief inspector is surprised, the daughter confirms that it really happened, sharing that she read the newspaper to her mom after she got back from school. After that, the teenager shares her experiences at school, revealing that she recited a poem for her French class. Excited, Ilda stands on the stairs and recites the verse to her dad, who believes it's not age appropriate. Because of this, the concerned father asserts that he'll talk to the school's nuns. However, his daughter pleads with him not to do so. While the chief inspector feeds Marta dinner that night, Ilda shares that her mom's daughter doctor has recognized the patient's progress. The teenager looks forward to seeing her mother well again, excited to have her serving customers so they can get back to business. Later, Ilda goes to her father's room and looks out the window, observing him as he goes to the annex. While the man's away, the suspicious Ilda checks his coat and finds a woman's lipstick. Unbeknownst to her, the owner of the lipstick is Laura, whom Vargas took home and has been sleeping in a room in the annex. After spending a romantic time together, Vargas and Laura discuss their personal experiences during the war. The chief inspector then explains that his scar originated from when a mortar struck their entire platoon, leaving him trapped under the bodies for the entire day. Subsequently, he pursued a career as a police officer to ensure his safety. On the other hand, the woman shares that she was holidaying in Midi with her family when the war broke out, so they stayed there. Before Vargas leaves, he advises Laura not to make noise during the day. He also assures her that she and her brother will soon have their visas for England. 
When Vargas is gone, Boris, who's been hiding in the closet, reveals himself. He laughs at the inspector's war experience and then massages his sister's back. Meanwhile, Ilda reads a Bible story to Diolinda, recounting the story of Lot's older daughter suggesting to her younger sister that they sleep with their father to preserve their family line. Hearing this, the housekeeper immediately thinks the teenager is making it up, finding the story disgusting. In response, Ilda points out that it's written in the holy book and proceeds to finish the tale, explaining that Lot's daughters got pregnant and they named their children Moab and Ben-Ami, who later became the father of the Ammonites. After the narration, she playfully grabs Diolinda, pushing her against the bed. She demands that the housekeeper take back what she said about her making up the Bible story. When the maid follows her order, the teenager suddenly kisses her. Annoyed, the housekeeper threatens her, saying she'll rip her tongue out if she does it again next time. Afterward, Diolinda still feels disgusted about the incestuous Bible story, preferring that Ilda read something about baby Jesus. However, the teenager explains that what she's reading is not from the New Testament. She reveals that she likes the Old Testament more because it involves more blood. Later that night, Ilda removes moves her clothing and sleeps in her father's bed, revealing her secret obsession with him. The next morning, Diolinda finds the teenager, scolding her for staying in her dad's bed and forgetting to go to school. However, the teenager seems unbothered and continues to sleep. Arriving home from school the following day, Ilda visits her mother and places a flower in her ear. When her daughter leaves to get the newspaper, the woman touches the flower, revealing that she is progressing. Meanwhile, the teenager catches Diolinda engaging in physical activity with Yasmin. Afterward, she overhears the inspector asking the housekeeper if she noticed Vargas bringing someone French lately. However, the maid explains that they've had no visitors since Marta fell ill. Suddenly, Diolinda and Yasmin's conversation is interrupted upon hearing Vargas's arrival. The maid pleads with the inspector to leave because she fears Vargas will kick her out if he finds out she is involved with his subordinate. Ilda runs downstairs to greet her father and then visits her mother in the room, turning on the radio for her. That night, the teenager confronts Diolinda for being with Yasmin, asking if she likes him, but the housekeeper admits that the inspector is not the husband type. Afterward, Ilda asks if the maid can sleep with her dad, but the housekeeper is offended by this question, asking the teenager to leave the room. When Ilda asks about the French people in their hotel, the maid explains that Yasmin had been silly earlier. In response, the teenager believes that there really is a foreigner residing with them. That night, Vargas visits his daughter's room, instructing her to sleep early and finish her book tomorrow instead. Before he leaves, she requests for a kiss. When the man does this, the teenager pulls his head, prompting him to break free. Annoyed, he states that she's too old for that request and instructs her to doze off. Because of this, Ilda thinks that Vargas doesn't like her anymore. When her dad leaves, Leaves, she resolves to regain her father's favor. Later that night, Laura leaves the annex and explores the hotel. However, as she returns to her room, she hears a voice calling for her mother, prompting her to turn her head. The following day, Ilda awakens and heads to the kitchen, where Diolinda reminds her to hurry because she is already late for school. When the teenager sees a teapot, she becomes curious about it, but the housekeeper shares that she is practicing something. That night, Ilda looks out the window and catches the maid returning from the annex. She then confronts her about feeding a French woman in the basement, but the housekeeper defends herself, saying she was just cleaning up there. Despite the maid's explanation, Ilda doesn't believe her. She blocks her way and demands the key. The housekeeper begs her not to, fearing that if Vargas finds out, he'll send her to Tarafal, a prisoner camp in Africa. Still, Ilda takes the key. However, as she's about to go to the basement, Dio Linda stops her, revealing that Vargas is also inside, prompting the teenager to change her mind. The curious daughter then asks what the French woman looks like. However, However, the maid explains that she has never seen the stranger because she simply leaves the food tray outside the bedroom door. Hearing this, Ilda asks where the room is, but Diolinda doesn't want to reveal it. In response, the teenager blackmails her, threatening that if the maid doesn't share the information, she'll tell her dad that the housekeeper gave her the key. Terrified, the maid reveals that the French woman stays in the room at the end by the closet. That night, Ilda heads to the annex and uses the key to get inside the room, where she sees Laura sleeping. When she hears someone coming, she hides in the closet, witnessing Boris waking up the woman to give him the morphine that he requested from Vargas. The teenager overhears their conversation, learning that Vargas gave Laura the keys to the hotel. Excitedly, the woman shares with her brother that they can leave any time. However, instead of being enthusiastic, the man becomes worried that they'll be sent back to Poland if they're caught. When Boris points out that they're safer where they are, Laura thinks that he's just saying that because of the morphine he 
he's getting for free. This offends her brother, prompting the woman to apologize and explain that she's fed up with being locked up all day. Laura then asks the man to lie down and whispers a joke to him, making him laugh. Having no chance to escape, Ilda wakes up the next morning on the floor, realizing that she'd fallen asleep the previous night. The teenager then stands up and quietly leaves the room, passing by the sleeping siblings. Returning to the hotel, she retrieves Laura's photo and visits her mother's room, lying beside her. She falls asleep, unknowingly leaving the picture on Marta's stomach. Upon waking, Ilda retrieves the photo and confesses to her mother that her dad is involved with a French woman, whom she thinks is almost her age. She urges her mom to get well as soon as possible. Suddenly, she is interrupted when Diolinda enters the room, scolding her for missing school again. The housekeeper warns the student that Vargas will skin her alive if he finds out. However, the teenager only asserts that the maid should refrain from interfering with her life. When Diolinda asks her if she went to the annex, Ilda lies saying she changed her mind. But before the teenager leaves the room, she whispers to her mom that she'll end the French woman's life. Later, Ilda heads to her dad's study room to return Laura's photo to the cabinet. However, after doing so, she discovers that her father has a new passport under a fake name. She also finds his resignation letter from the police force. Connecting the dots, the teenager suspects that Vargas will leave his family to be with a French woman. Immediately after, Ilda heads to the refugee's room where she finds horrifying drawings of bodies. Suddenly, Boris interrupts her, asking for her identity. Instead of answering, the teenager asks questions about whether he drew the illustrations, and he confirms this. She admits that she doesn't like the drawings and asks if real-life sightings inspired them. However, the artist explains that it's all a product of his imagination. When Laura arrives and questions her, Ilda points out that she is Vargas's daughter, not a spy. She admits that her dad doesn't know she is there and pleads with them not to say anything to him because she is prohibited in the area. The woman then asks what she wants from them, and the teenager informs them that they must leave. She fabricates a tale that Vargas is a dangerous man and will hurt them. However, Laura doesn't believe her and is confident that the inspector won't harm them. Still, the teenager insists that she's telling the truth. She wants to prove this by translating a newspaper article to them. Intrigued, the woman invites the teenager to do the reading in her room instead of Boris's. There, she reads the story of a prisoner who lost her sight and hair in a prisoner camp. Curious, Laura takes the newspaper and realizes it's a communist one. When she asks if Ilda is a communist, the teenager denies this, sharing that she intends to protect them from Vargas, who might send them to a camp called Tarafal in Africa. When the woman claims that they're not communists, the teenager explains that the camp does not only take communists. Before Ilda can continue her statement, she realizes that it's already late and must head back to the hotel because Vargas might arrive soon. As she exits the door, the teenager asks the refugees if they'll leave the place. However, Laura states that they won't be doing it right away. Hearing this, Ilda suspects they'll bring her father, prompting Boris to laugh and Laura to worry. Curious about the accusation, the woman then asks why she asks that question, prompting the teenager to explain that she found her dad's fake passport and resignation letter. The siblings are surprised because the inspector told them nothing about it. Laura tries to convince herself that the fake passport doesn't mean anything, but Ilda warns her not to take her father away from her. After the teenager leaves, Boris worries about their fate, thinking that they left France only to be sent to a camp. His sister explains that she didn't know anything about Vargas's fake passport. In response, he questions her what they would do if the inspector flees with them, but she can't answer clearly. Suddenly, Laura stands up, and her brother notices her blue dress, asking where it came from. She then reminds him that it was a garment he'd bought for her back in France. Boris recalls this and is surprised that her sister didn't return it because she thought it didn't suit her back then. However, the woman reveals that she changed her mind because she wanted to give the dress to their mom. Laura suddenly becomes lonely, remembering what happened to their mother who's still with the authorities. When she tells her brother it's not his fault, Boris insists it was. He admits that he should have listened to her and returned to Paris, but instead, they left their parents alone. Laura points out that if they returned, they'd be with their mom and dad suffering as well. Still, Boris thinks he's a coward for abandoning their folks, but the woman stays hopeful, reminding him that because they're still alive, that means that their enemies haven't won yet. Meanwhile, Diolinda is surprised to see Yasmin waiting for her in the kitchen. Sensing that Vargas is hiding something, he threatens the maid to disclose where the French refugees are. When the maid doesn't reveal anything, he threatens to break her arms. Suddenly, the cop is interrupted when Vargas appears, questioning what he's doing in his place. In response, the officer requests to speak with him privately, prompting Vargas to bring him to his office. There, Yasmin informs his superior that the French refugees and their files suddenly 
suddenly disappeared, suspecting that he's keeping them somewhere in the hotel. The cop clarifies that he doesn't care about what he has done and only wants his share of the siblings' money. However, Vargas doesn't admit to anything. In response, Yasmin threatens him further, implying that he can destroy his career. He reveals that he had a colleague take photos of the siblings' files and fake passports because he already had a hunch about him from the start. The cop also reveals that he went to the guest house where the siblings stayed, and the landlady recognized Vargas for fetching their things. Before he leaves, he gives the chief inspector three days to calculate his share and give it to him. Unbeknownst to them, Ilda overhears their conversation. Following this, the worried teenager lies beside Diolinda, who comforts her with an embrace. The next morning, the teenager discovers Marta is no longer in her room, prompting her to call the housekeeper for help immediately. However, despite searching every room, they realize that the woman is indeed missing. Diolinda suggests that Ilda inform her dad, worrying that Marta might have gone out alone. However, Ilda suddenly rushes to the annex, thinking that the French people have taken her mom. Before she reaches the refugee's room, she suddenly screams upon seeing Marta lying ice cold on the grass. Hearing the teenagers scream, Boris and Laura come out of their rooms, worried about what happened. At that moment, Yasmin reveals himself behind the door, realizing that the siblings were really under Vargas's care all along. The cop then thanks Ilda, who turns out to have contacted him earlier because she was afraid that her dad would run away with Laura. However, before he can catch the refugees, Diolinda intervenes, instructing the siblings to close and lock the door. Yasmin then turns to the maid, demanding the key. However, the woman swears that she doesn't have it, prompting him to smack her. Suddenly, Ilda appears behind him and hits him with a gardening tool, resulting in his demise. Afterward, the tearful teenager firmly instructs Diolinda to leave and take the refugees away with her. Following her request, the maid complies, and as she departs, the daughter holds her mom's hand, grieving her loss. When Vargas returns, she's surprised to find Marta missing from her room. Searching everywhere, he eventually reaches the annex and discovers the subordinate on the ground. Soon after, he finds his daughter with a lifeless Marta. After confessing to Vargas that she's responsible for Yasmin's demise and for sending Diolinda and the refugees away, Ilda looks at her father, emphasizing now that everyone's gone, they're stuck with each other. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.